Monica Santani, and I'm here with Nine Years Anchor Leslie Foster. Thank you so much, Leslie, for to talking be here. to us. Yeah. I wanted to know just a little bit about Leslie Foster. Okay. How long have you been a news anchor? I have been a news anchor here, oh gosh, maybe eight years? Okay. Eight and all years? together? All together, I've been at the station for about 14 years. I came when I was just a child. I was six or seven when of I course, came. and she still is. Yeah, yeah. And so tell me why you chose this career path for yourself. Well, I didn't choose it initially. First I thought I was going to be a dancer. Then I thought I was going to be a dentist. Then I thought I was going to go into marketing. But I have an aunt and uncle that are both in the business. And I looked up to them and respected them a good deal. And when I was a senior in high school, I got involved in yearbook and sort of newspaper, and then I finally got an internship at my local uh, newspaper station, and so from there, it really kind of fostered a love of journalism. I love telling stories, I love probing, I love to see how other people live, what makes people do what they do, um, so this is really a great opportunity to kind of find out what makes people tick and help people make really good decisions that impact their lives. And that love for storytelling is what's made you a fine time presenter, and in that role, what do you need to do every day to prepare for it? Tell me like what your day looks like when you come into work. Well, my day starts before I come into work. So I get up every morning at five. I know it's kind of crazy, but I have a five-year-old, so that's the only time I can like get some exercise in. So I get on the treadmill, and so I have my, uh, my iPod and my Blackberry, and I'm checking the wires and checking the newspapers to kind of see what's going on. That's amazing. And then I get in here about nine, and um, in addition to my responsibilities at five and six, I also head up our consumer team. And so I work very closely with my uber-talented producer, Stephanie Wilson, and we talk about what the most compelling consumer stories are of the day. We pitch them in the morning meeting. We find out whether they say yay or nay. And then we, we plot out the day. But um, in terms of preparing for the shows, it's you know reading, always reading as much as you can to learn about whatever the issues are of the day, making sure I understand what's in the shows so that I can be intelligent enough to ask the question um, based on what I know about the story, what I've read about the story, what I understand has evolved um, in that story throughout the day. Um, and really kind of reading through the show. I mean, literally reading through each story to make sure that, you know, I am the vessel for the story. So my job is to make sure that I communicate the tone and the, uh, the feeling and the emotion of the story. And so I have to know it in order to give it to you, for you to feel it however you feel it. It's amazing. It almost feels like you eat, sleep, and dream the news. It's 24-7. It is 24-7. Yeah. I, I don't think I eat, sleep, and breathe it, but I certainly try to make sure I have a good enough understanding of it yes. so that if you're asking me about it, and that's what people rely on us for. They rely on us for information. And so um, I would be doing our viewers a disservice if I wasn't as informed as I could be in the process of helping them to be informed. Well, you were recognized and written about in the book Women Journalists at Ground Zero for your coverage of the 9-11 attacks. It's difficult, it was a very difficult story for anyone to cover. How do you feel you covered a disaster of that magnitude? To be honest, I'm still not sure. I mean, I had just come to Washington in January of that year, and I was one of the youngest folks on staff um, I was still, as I call myself, a cub reporter here because everyone else had been here, these iconic names, all these folks I had watched when I was at Howard University. And so there was nothing, I think, that could really prepare me for that. That was an unprecedented day in my lifetime. Um, I mean, I covered homicides before, but in terms of covering something like that, I, I didn't have any practice for that. Um, I actually, on that day, was supposed to fill in for JC on the noon, but of course when that happened, everything changed. Um, and I ended up being paired with a photographer who's no longer here. And on that day, we did a lot of roaming, so I didn't actually get on the air on September 11th, but from September 12th on, I was at the Pentagon, and um, I had developed an eye infection. There was something going on with the smoke coming from the Pentagon. It was blowing right over in our direction where we were, and I 
had developed this awful eye infection and had to wear my glasses oh for my like goodness. the next week and a half. But it was really kind of crazy trying to make sure that you, um, A, were focused, uh, two, you know, you knew the gravity of what was going on and uh, wanted to make sure that you were um, sensitive about how you were covering this because at the time, I mean, it was a morgue right. in a sense. There were still right. bodies there and um, there was still uh, smoke and fire and all kinds of things there. Um, all so, those elements and yet you have to be as focused as possible and tell the story almost without emotion in the morning. In the early morning, because at that time I was working the early morning shift, and so you know what that's like, and you're coming in here very early hours, and uh, you have to be thinking, and you have to be able to put your thoughts together fairly rationally in the morning and communicate about something really, really awful. That's a behind-the-scenes story that we didn't know, but on a lighter note, mm -hmm. tell us something about Leslie Foster that <laughs> none of us would ever think or know. <laughs> Well, I don't, um, I eat chocolate every day, <laughs> every day. Yes. Um, where does it go? <laughs> I know where it goes. <laughs> um, I think I'm pretty funny, and I'm not sure that that actually comes across all the time on the news, because, you know, <laughs> so you have to I be know, so I see her the in the box <laughs> yes. sometimes. Yes. But um, when Leslie Foster <laughs> lets loose, watch out. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. I'm not yes. quite as. I'm not the refined sugar that everybody <laughs> I love it all the time. I, I can it. be sugar in the raw. Oh, <laughs> I love that, sugar in the raw. Leslie, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you and to work with you all of these years. Thank you so much. One of my dearest friends. Am I allowed to say that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. okay. Yes. And that is how Leslie Foster goes the extra mile for us here in D.C. every day. <laughs>